Today's video, I'm going to be continue from when I left off from part one. I know like uh, I ended up that video getting up, coming up your baseline capacity of 80. And my question today is to answer like if you do calculate your team baseline capacity, do you truly uh, asset, give your team this particular baseline um, uh, capacity number? for them to actually able to say this is their maximum they can commit to in a sprint. And today in this video, we're gonna be answering us that question of what is a buffer and why is it so important for you as a Scrum Master to implement buffer in your own capacity planning. Welcome back to Aisha Scrum Platform. Uh, I'm very happy to have you all. And for all my viewers, my current subscriber, I appreciate you all watching my videos, liking it, sharing it. I do not take it for granted. And if you find this content valuable, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. I really, really appreciate you all. All right, so let's get into it, right? So before, uh, give me just a quick summary. We ended up uh, coming up with 80 based on 10 developer in this sprint, going back to our baseline of one story point equals one day worth of work. Um, and I, I, like, I also want to mention this, that sometimes I know for some people, they work in a company whereby it's done by hours and you still can use this technique. Let's say, for example, uh, you calculate hours and they will always go by what a team member actually will put in in the hours in a day. So you can go by saying like if a team member actually complete four hours, that will equal 0.5. What are the story points? And in that case, maybe you can be using like the modified Fibonacci sequence number to get that. Or uh, and I know for sometimes too with that number, uh, when it comes to how much hours a particular team member works, depending on if they are a full-time employee or if they are a contractor employee. And I know for the most part, for full-time, uh, six hours a day, it's considered uh, their worth of work for one day. It's in a, a compared to a full timer where they work and get paid hourly, eight hours will equal their one day worth of work. And if you also want to use the same technique, you can also use that to, to come up with some kind of story points if you want to introduce that to your teams later on. So uh, going back to our capacity planner, so 80 was my total of capacity. So I was saying that this video, I'm going to dedicate it to answer what is a buffer. And I don't know if you all are familiar with buffer. When I meant buffer is B-U-F-F-E-R. <laughs> and it's sometimes practiced in some teams. I've also been part of a company where uh, I try to introduce it to the team. And they're like, nope, nope, we are not doing that. Um, that's basically going to deviate us away from our numbers because HR um, and, and the PM will need this, our uh, availability to know how they can budget because the budget is based on, the hours that people are putting towards the project and that doesn't work so just to ensure please if you are including buffer in your own team capacity just to ensure to verify with leadership and people at work is something that they will want you to, want you to do as a team but i highly um like that i like to always use buffer i think it's the best for scrum team because as we all know we continue to work in this agile space we should be open to constantly wanting to change and readjust and adjust our daily work as long we are working towards meeting our sprint goal. And in that case, that's where buffer comes in place. And buffer is basically planning for unplanned work. I know that sounds like we have like, oh, what do you mean planning for unplanned work? So let's just say, for example, like, like your team in this case, capacity is 80, right? And when my team, like I calculate the capacity for this sprint one and it's 80, in this case, I'm not gonna to commit to 80 for the sprints. Instead, I will take 10% of 80. And that number will now give me my available capacity for this sprint. And I'll show you all the math, how to come up with that number and that. So that, uh, let's say for example, if anything happened in the middle of the sprints, uh, my team not at full capacity. I'm basically allocating 10% at side in case of anything that will come in the middle of the sprints, or maybe there will be uncertainties, or maybe someone too might get ill or something that we still have some kind of bandwidth left that anyone else in the team can help uh, pick on that tax. You know, and sometimes people will be like, oh, actually, my team, when we lock our sprints, 
nothing changed for the two weeks. It actually given in our uh, data, we don't have much scope change. Our scope always remained the same. And my team is very uh, stable and secure. We don't have any turnover. And in that case, for sure, if it's not valuable, you should not implement uh, the 10% buffer. But if you know you work in a team and there's a constant change, there's constant um, things moving up and down and you can't even help it sometimes because we know like sometimes high priority will come. Or even when you do release, sometimes there'll be issues in production and you want that to be fixed right away. And people have to quickly put everything on hold and take on that new tax and then go back to their work. So having this buffer will help you ensure that your team is not overworked. At the same time, you have like capacity at side whereby they can use that at any given point in the sprint to work on any unplanned work. Going back to my definition of a buffer being that planning for unplanned work. I hope that makes sense. If not, um, you all can send me an email or I can further explain all of this. And if you're interested in mentorship, uh, do not hesitate to email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com. You can also call the business phone number at 487 one nine seven nine. You can email on WhatsApp and the business number. All right. So that's what buffer is all about. So let's now get this team buffer. Let's say now we like we in sprint planning, and we want to get the team buffer. And usually I do that during sprint planning because the good thing about doing it during sprint planning is that the number you now generate will now be reflecting on what you have on Jira on your total availability. You know. So for me to get a buffer of ten percent of eighty. I basically will just uh, do the math here on this column. So let me do it on this side. So just to ensure that you all have able to see this. So I basically will put uh, 10 divided by 100 equals 0.1. No, that shouldn't be enter. And I will put uh, 0.1. Then I will now multiply the 0.1 times 0.1 times 80 equals eight. Then I'll now take the 80 minus eight minus eight equals 72. So for this sprint, uh, I'm going to say that my team availability, after taking out the 10% buffer, my team availability for this sprint will be 72 story points. So, so that's our availability. And I like to write it next to it and I do all the math. So I show how I come up with my number. So in case like someone is asking me, oh, Aisha, how you come up with all of this number? And sometimes too, I do this prior to coming to sprint planning. So I like to share my capacity planner in sprint planning. I think it's a nice thing just to verify with the team before we even go on to estimation. Because uh, usually with my team, we always go over all the stories thing in the, uh, in, the uh, in refinement and verify the last one is planning. Then before I even jump on and start going on and start telling the team to start estimation, I will always show my team how I came up with our number for the day. Like, oh, how did I come up with 72? I just showed everything and do the math and they get it. And look, if anybody else have any questions, do not hesitate to let me know. And then for the sprint, I want to tell my team, since no holidays, no PTO, uh, what we have, our maximum we can commit to for the sprint is 72 story points. And then my goal as a Scrum Master is to ensure that we are committed to 72 story points. And let's say my team is such a high performing team, right? And they will always complete all their tasks. And in the middle of the sprints, they have they need more work to do. In that case, I will always ensure that we complete all our true work with our availability and they can always add on some more work. You know, we need to add more and ensure that we at the end, we complete it. And although our capacity will show that we had 72, but then our velocity at the end, it's going to show like our true completed work. In that case, if they added more and they completed everything, the number going to go high, right? So that's why you always see like uh, uh, Scrum Masters will be like, oh, 72, uh, it will be a capacity, but our velocity uh, is here. So let's just use that. But remember, if you have a new team, there's like no data, right? you will have no uh, velocity yet because as you con continue to complete a sprint, you now hopefully get your average 
uh, going on. So we can also, I'll show you all of that, the difference when people can use capacity and velocity. So I hope this video about the buffer uh, hopefully makes sense to most of you. I know I've been getting a lot of email about the, uh, what do I mean by that? What do I mean about not committing to the AD? So hopefully this will hopefully help uh, answer most of your questions. And if not, you can always comment. I can also reply most of your questions. Uh, and thank you all for watching this video. In my next video, I'm going to come up with uh, uh, case studies and scenario on, let's say there was holiday and let's say uh, I had a tech lead that had a lot of support work they have to do. And let's say we have onshore holiday or offshore holiday. So how can I come up with my team um, availability to commit to in the springs? So my next video, I'm going to show you all how I can come up with all of that. And we'll continue from there. Thank you all for watching my video. I truly appreciate you all. If you've been finding my content valuable, please like and subscribe to my channel. And you can also call me for mentorship at 484-767-1979 or email me at admin at aishascrumtech.com. Thank you all and see you again in my next video.